Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's take a look at some of the new features of iOS 5. So now that iOS 5 is out, let's take a look at some of the new features. Now one of the big ones is that you don't have to have a computer to use your iOS device. You don't have to sync it with anything. So that's a big deal for people just getting their first iPhone or iPad and maybe don't actually want to have a computer or maybe they have an older computer and they just don't want to bother syncing with it. Now most of the new features of iOS 5 will work both on iPhone and the iPad. So let's use the iPad to take a closer look at some of them. So here's split keyboards. Go into anything that uses uh, the keyboard and then you have it down here and you can see these little ridges here in the bottom right. Uh, you can click and hold and you'll get an undock and split option there. So let's split. You can see it splits the keyboard into two parts which can be useful for thumb typing. You can also grab that button there at the lower right and drag up and down. If you drag it all the way to the bottom the keyboard comes back together. If you just go to undock then you can see that you can move the keyboard anywhere you want on the screen. So move it to the top of the screen or the middle if you want. And there are a lot of other ways to use this functionality as well. For instance, just grabbing and dragging will instantly split the keyboard like that. So a new app is Reminders. Go into that, and this is for iPhone and iPad. Uh, you can add these little reminders, they're like little alarms. Let's hit the plus button there and add a new one. And you can select it, and then on the left you can see the name. Uh, you can have it remind you um, on the day. Uh, you can have it have priorities, notes, uh, anything you want here. And so it's kind of like a, a to do list manager. Messages is an app that allows you to send text messages between different iOS devices. So you and your friends that have iPhones and iPads uh, can use this instead of using your carrier's text messaging, which may include fees. So you notice there's a Twitter app there that's actually included. Uh, it's not uh, something I had to add. It's just included with iOS 5, both iPhone and iPad. And it's even integrated in settings. You can see that there's a Twitter settings panel that's part of the main part of settings. Uh, it's not a third party app really. It's included as part of the OS. So you can add your Twitter account and then different applications actually use that Twitter account. Say so you can send out messages to your friends directly from there without having to do it in a separate Twitter app. So in addition to the cool feature of the camera being able to use the up volume control to snap a photo, there's a bunch of new stuff in the Photos app. Big new thing is you can create a new album. So you can do it right here on your iPhone or iPad. Uh, before you had to do that on your computer and then sync it. Now you can create a new one. You can see it will appear there. In addition to that, you can edit photos now. So you have this edit button at the top and you can actually do things like enhance the photo, uh, red eye reduction, cropping, all sorts of things. So now in Safari, and this is an iPad only feature, you now have tabs instead of different pages. So here I'm viewing a page. I've got a plus button at the upper right. I can add another tab there and I can go to another page. And now I can switch between them just by clicking on the tabs and I can close a tab by clicking the X on the left side of the tab. Now the calendar app has some new looks to it and also has on the iPad a yearly view and on the iPhone for the first time it has a weekly view as well and has a bunch of new enhancements in calendar. If you look in settings we have a whole new set of settings for iCloud and you can see all the different things here that you can sync uh, using iCloud uh, and you have your account at the top and you can create a new account including a new me.com email address if you like uh, right from here. And of course the big new feature is Wi-Fi sync and you can see that in the general settings here. Uh, I've turned that on so that um, I can actually sync this iPad with my Mac without having connected with the dock cable. You can turn that on here. You can also turn that on in iTunes when you are syncing. Now a cool new thing is you can swipe directly between apps. So I'm going to use four fingers and swipe from right to left and you can see I've gone from one app to another and I can go the opposite direction as well. So I can get between apps without having to go first to the home screen. 
Now a big deal here in iOS 5 is notifications and we have the settings here for it. Um, you can have notifications set for different apps in different ways. So let's instance let's go to the calendar app and you can see here illustrations of how alerts are shown. You can have them set to none. Alert which is on the right which is uh, the default from before um, which little pop-ups appear and you have to dismiss them. Or you can also have banners that drop down from the top and then disappear a little after. You can also decide whether or not the app icon will do something uh, when you get a notification uh, and whether or not notifications are viewed in the lock screen um, when you've got it locked. Another new iPad only feature, only actually works on the iPad 2, is AirPlay mirroring. So if you have a $99 Apple TV 2, you could actually use your Wi-Fi network to mirror the screen to your television. So this could be really interesting for gaming. Matter of fact, developers actually have access to be able to put something different up on the screen than is on the iPad. So you can potentially play a game where you have the controls in your hands and the display up on the screen, maybe even multiple players. And the new iPhone 4S should have AirPlay mirroring as well. Although older iPhones and the original iPad won't have this because it requires the latest processor. So iOS 5 is for the iPhone 3GS, 4, and of course the new 4S as well as both versions of the iPad and the last two generations of the iPod Touch. To get it just sync with iTunes and it should show that there's a new update available. Now I'll have a closer look at some of these features in later episodes. Till next time, this is Gary with MacMOS Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the videos link at the top of the page and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.